In the early 19th century, most spark gap transmitters were indeed operated from battery sources, but 10,000 volt batteries don't exist. So a method is needed in order to convert the low voltages from a typical battery into the high thousands of volts that we need in order to operate the spark gap transmitter. So how do they do it? You might first think that you could use a transformer, but you might also know that transformers only really work with alternating current. For example, in power distribution systems, power lines operate at high voltages, and here in the lab or in a home, the voltages coming out of the wall would typically be lower, and that conversion takes place in a transformer. But that only works because it's AC, alternating current. What can we do with a battery? All right, so a battery is DC transformers don't normally work. So what we need to do in order to allow the transformer to work is to use something called an induction coil. That's one way that we can replace the large battery that you've just seen in the circuit with a small battery in the diagram that you're seeing now. Here's how it works. Assume now that we have a rather small battery, and again, just as in the previous circuit, we have a single Morse key or an on-off switch to turn the entire circuit either on or off. So it's either transmitting or it's not. Assume that the transmitter is turned on, so the Morse key is pressed down. Now, as current starts to flow out of the small battery, it ends up at this point contact. Now, against this point contact is placed a spring-loaded mechanism so that electricity will normally flow because these are in contact. So when electricity starts to flow between the point contact and the spring-loaded mechanism, then current will flow through the windings of a coil. There are not very many turns on the primary side of the coil, but there will be a lot of turns on the secondary side of the coil. So if we could just apply an AC low voltage across the primary, then we should end up with a very high voltage AC signal across the secondary. Now it's the spring-loaded switch that converts the DC current into AC. Here's how it works. Once current starts flowing through this primary coil, then it creates a magnetic field across the iron. It's just a simple electromagnet. Now what this piece of iron does is it attracts the piece of metal from the spring-loaded switch. As the piece of metal moves over towards the electromagnet that's just been created, then it loses contact with the point and current can no longer flow through the electromagnet. This causes the magnetic field to break down and the little spring-loaded mechanism springs back into contact with the point and current starts flowing again and the process repeats. So this is very similar to the way an old-fashioned bell works where there's a little hammer attached to the spring-loaded mechanism and it would beat against the bell in a repeated way. What's nice about the induction coil is that what we've done is convert a DC voltage of a battery into an AC voltage. Now it's not a sine wave, it's something more resembling a square wave because the circuit is either on or off and we've used a mechanical method to create the AC signal, but we've created it nonetheless. The frequency at which the spring-loaded mechanism bounces back and forth between the point contact and the electromagnet is rather low compared to the other frequencies in the circuit. So the fact that we have an AC rather than a DC signal on the secondary side of the induction coil really doesn't matter. The only thing that we really care about is that we get a high voltage on the secondary of the induction coil. So it's very easy now to generate something like the 10,000 volts that we need. Now, something else we can do to slightly simplify the circuit once we make this modification is that we can remove one of the capacitors. We can now just simply remove capacitor C2 from the circuit completely. When we're having the spark, there's a conducting channel between capacitor C1 and C2 anyway. And because of the presence of that induction coil, we now have similar functionality that we used to have with C1. So this circuit works just as well, but we save one capacitor. This diagram shows how the different parts of a spark gap transmitter could have been put together. And what I'd like you to notice in this diagram is that it's the induction coil that tends to be the largest element in this circuit. Spark gap transmitters were used throughout the early 20th century, and they were eventually replaced with radio transmitters that use vacuum tubes. And the reason why spark gap transmitters were eventually replaced is because the sine wave present at the tank circuit is not pure. The spark gap allows the tank circuit to be periodically pumped up with new power from the battery, and as soon as people were able to build amplifiers with vacuum tubes and then later transistors, it became possible to make continuous pure sine waves, and we'll learn how to do that later on in this course. 
One of the problems with the spark gap transmitters is because that sine wave was not pure, it tended to pollute the radio spectrum. So once we ended up in the mid-1920s, for example, with some transmitters operating as spark gap transmitters and then other transmitters operating with much more pure sinusoidal signals, there started to be a lot of complaints about the spark gap transmitters. So nowadays, governments tend to auction off different radio channels in the spectrum to whichever company is willing to bid the most money for it. Now where we're going to operate in this course and where spark gap transmitters, for example, typically operated is at the very low end of this chart. In fact, in Singapore, the AM or medium wave radio band is completely deprecated. Here in Singapore, if you turn on an AM radio, you won't find any stations at all. We only have FM radios here. But in many countries, such as the US and throughout Europe, you can still find many radio stations transmitting on the AM band. Now the AM band tends to be from about 500 kilohertz up to about 1600 kilohertz.